Welcome back all my dear friends. Today we are starting a new chapter that's circles. Such an amazing figure. Now before coming to our topic and starting a thing, the things about circle, let's resume back to the history and know something a bit more about circles. Circles, if we uh, talk about the history of circles, the ancient philosophers considered circles as an intrinsically divine and perfect figure. Since it has no start and no end, no corners. Also, the history of circle says that it has been known to mankind before we even started recording history. It's such an ancient figure. Because we have some natural figures which already existed before we even knew what history is about. The natural figures like the sun, moon, earth, the planets. Now the question may arise, why are we concerned about starting the circles? The answer is that life we live is much affected by the use of circles. The wheel, wheel which are used for us to move uh, in the vehicles. The greatest invention of mankind that is based on the use of circles. The rotating objects around us, the gears in your vehicles, bangles, earrings, dial of the watches, coins, and what not. Even in physics, we study rotational motion where we need to know about circles. And you might also know that when we talk about atoms, the atoms consist of the nucleus, which is a a spherical body in the center. Now the sphere is also made up of the basic figure is circle. Then there are orbits which are circular in shape where the electrons revolve. There too we have circles. And in mathematics particularly, circles helped us to know more about geometry, calculus and astronomy. So you know how a important figure a circle is. Now coming to our topic, what is a circle or how might you draw a circle or how will you represent a circle? You might have used an instrument, a geometrical instrument known as the compass. The compass consists of one pointed end and one end where you could fix your pencil. Then you fix your pointed end on the paper and then revolve this other end along the paper and form a circle, isn't it? So what did you do? You actually fixed a point, you fixed the distance and then revolved it and you got the path of a circle. So consider that this is the fixed distance. So you have fixed the distance and then you are rotating the distance and getting a circle. Then tell me, how are you going to define a circle? I could define a circle as the point, the location of all those points which have a fixed distance from a fixed point. As per the geometric definition too, we could define it as the locus. Locus is the collection of the points which forms the figure. Locus of a point of the point which moves in a plane such that the distance from a fixed point is always as at a constant distance okay is always fixed so as you could see here in, in this circle this is the fixed point this is the fixed point where we keep the pointed end of our compass and this is the fixed distance along where we move our pencil and form this circular path Okay, so this is the circle. Now this fixed point, what do you know this fixed point as? Yes, it is the center. And that fixed distance, this fixed distance from where, uh, from, uh, along which you're getting the path, that is the radius. So we could actually draw a circle if we know that we have a fixed point 
and we know the fixed distance that is the radius other than that we could not draw this figure okay it has it is a circular path it is a circle and which has no starting point and no end point now what else we know about the circle whenever we draw a 2d shape or 2d figure on the plane it always divides the plane into three regions that is the interior exterior and the boundaries similarly a circle is also dividing this plane into three regions the interior portion the exterior portion which lies outside this and the boundary so actually this boundary is acting as the line which divides the interior and the exterior so if you ask the position of a point with respect to a circle so if the point lies somewhere here here or within the boundary of the circle then it is the interior okay so that's the interior now if the point lies somewhere here okay let me leave it as q so that point it, it lies outside the boundary so that's the exterior point now the point here which lies on the circle like the point p that is on the boundary that lies on the circle that is the locus of the point which is at a fixed distance from a fixed point what else we know you have studied that we have the radius and if i take the, the twice of the radius which has a straight line formed across the circle so look if i take this point r and this is the straight line uh, which is passing through the center and touching the other point on the circle this is known as the diameter isn't it so what is the diameter it started from the circle one point on the circle passed through the center and then joined another point on the circle in along that straight line so that is the diameter so this other term we have is a diameter now what is the speciality of a diameter or what is the relation of a diameter with the radius a diameter is the twice of radius if this is a radius or is a radius let me name it as small r then op is a radius so this is or plus op that's two times the radius so diameter is twice the radius this is what we already know what about the area of a circle and the circumference what is the circumference like in a uh, poly polygon where we have linear line segments then we had the term perimeter what was perimeter that if i walk from one point along the boundaries of that polygon then i get the length across that figure which is known as the perimeter similarly here we have circumference now a circumference is actually the length which is revolved from starting from one point and moving along the circle okay so if i if i take a thin thread and if i start from this point p and then i trace the thread along this circle and ends here so whatever the length of thread i will get would be known as the circumference of this circle right so it is very much like the perimeter but perimeter is for the linear figures made up of line segments circumference is for circular figures so so circumference how is the circumference denoted in mathematically mathematical form or what is the formula of circumference a circumference of a circle with the radius r could be written as 2 pi r just that the circumference of a circle with radius r then what about the area the area covered by this circle of radius r in this plane that is pi r 
square. Okay, so we have the circumference is 2 pi r and the area is pi r square. Now, what other things we could brush up our knowledge with? Let's move on today. Now, here you look at this figure. There are cer certain circles drawn along this plane, isn't it? What is the thing which we call a figure like this? What we call this figure which have certain circles which are arranged in a symmetric order? This is known as concentric circles. Concentric circles have same center point. The fixed point according to the definition is same. But the fixed distance for each of the circle varies. So the distance here is R1. This is R2. Let us take it as R3. So the uh, radius of each of the circle is different. But what is common? The center point is common. So such figures are known as concentric circles. 